All right, moving on to the AFC South Division. You got the Jags minus 150, heavy favorites here. Then you got the Titans plus 300, Colts plus 625, and then the Texans are 9 to 1. I mean, do you guys think anyone else besides the Jags are coming out I of the think, AFC I think this South? Is an easy, an easy, obvious bet here. And I feel like I'm. Oh, give it to us. Give I it think to Texans, us. Texans at 9 to 1 is an absolute, like, I want all of that. Let's go, D'Amico Ryans. I would say, look, you got a new coach who we think is going to be a really good head coach who's shown an, an ability to really to 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 like. There's no drop off from Robert Sala to D'Amico Ryans in terms of the defense. You don't have the quarterback position shored up by any stretch of the imagination. The Jimmy G signing would have been nice, but yeah. you do have Davis Mills who and Case Keenum who are functional NFL quarterbacks at times. You added uh, Devin Singletary in the run game at times. So you have him yeah. and Damian Pierce. You re-signed Laramie Tunsil. You add Robert Woods. Like This run game could be really interesting for the Texans with the addition of, of Robert Woods. Noah Brown, a sneaky little add there as well. John Michi, hopefully, you know, will get back on the field um, and, and recovered. They added Amari Rogers, who's like, like there's a, I, I think the Texans have, you have an argument that the Texans had low-key the best, of, the best offseason. Of, like, they made the most improvements of any team in the NFL just in terms of making them a com a more competitive than they have been. Uh, Bobby Slowick is their OC now. He comes from San Francisco. He was fantastic under, under Kyle Shanahan. And there's enough veteran pieces where you, where you bring in Denzel Perryman, like Jerry Hughes, you know, Sheldon. They like just have like enough veteran pieces where maybe something clicks on defense. And what if they just have, what if they get CJ Stroud or Bryce Young? And they're and whoever or whatever quarterback they get or, or Will Levis, whatever quarterback they get at two is just good out of the gates. Like Jacksonville can take a step back. Tennessee, I, I don't understand why they're three to one. And the Colts have a lot of question marks at the quarterback position right now. <laughs> if you thought, however, and Breach can maybe expound on this, but if you thought Breach that the Colts were getting Lamar Jackson six and a half to, plus six twenty five would not be a bad stab either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that is something you sprinkle on if you do think they're going to get Lamar Jackson because that is a number that would just skyrocket overnight yes. if they ended up getting him. But it's, Jacksonville just scares me in this spot. This is a team that has not had a winning season, a winning record in back-to-back -back seasons since 2004, 2005. It has been almost 20 years. This is a franchise that has not earned my trust. I cannot bet <laughs> them, especially when there is a minus sign in front of their name. The one thing I will say about the Titans, they are not who I would bet. But look, Ryan Tannehill went 6-6 six and six last season. They went 7-10 and because Tannehill got injured, and they were horrible without him on the field. Is Tannehill a great quarterback? No, but he is a good enough quarterback to run the offense that Tennessee wants to run, and he's never had a losing record since he's been in Tennessee. 6-6 uh, six and six was his worst as a starter. So I do feel like that team can compete as long as Tannehill's healthy, or maybe they upgrade a quarterback and do something crazy like maybe they get Lamar Jackson. Um, but the crazy thing here is I actually agree with Brenton. I think the Texans yes. are the yes. best value here. You know a fun fact about the Texans, guys? Uh, yes, they went 3-13-1 last season. They actually had a winning record in the division. They went 3-2-1 against AFC South teams and 0-11 against everyone else. So as far as the competitive landscape in the AFC South, they played well against division opponents. And then you look at everyone they added. We saw them add the double Ds with uh, Dalton Schultz and Devin Singletary. Oh, yeah. Also, I forgot too. With Sheldon Rankins, Denzel Perriman. I mean, they've added all these guys, Jimmy Ward, that are going to be starters and, and could quickly help this franchise turn things around. As Brenton noted, though, the quarterback spot, you don't know what's going to go there. So that is the one hesitant part. But, man, if they get somebody good in there, plus 900. Woo, woo. Um, I also worth pointing out, I meant to say this when we were watching – or watching, talking, talking about <laughs> the uh, AFC West. Like the Broncos, the one more intriguing thing about it, and the same thing applies to the Texans and to the Jaguars, the Broncos get a last place schedule. So do the Texans. The Texans get a last place schedule. And you know mm. what the Jaguars now get? A first place schedule. And yep. if you take a peek at it, um, for instance, they the get – yeah, Breach, like their their crossover opponent in the AFC West this year is, that's right, the Kansas City Chiefs, whereas the crossover opponent for the, the Jaguars is, whereas the crossover opponent now, I mean, the, the, maybe the Texans get hosed because they have the Broncos because they're last, but point being is like... Well, Brenton, let me let me just make your point really concise here. Thank you. The, the Jags <laughs> have to play 
The Jags have to play the Bills, Chiefs, and 49ers, and no one else in the AFC South has to play those three teams. Right. Which are those wow. are the three, those are probably the three biggest favorites to win the Super Bowl coming into the season. And they have to play all three of them. So thank you, Breach. Well, I'm convinced now to sprinkle a little money on the uh, Houston Texans at nine Ooh. to one.